Hey guys, in this video we're going to be installing the Leo Vinci Factory S slip-ons on a 2018 Ninja 1000. If you haven't seen it already, check out my other video about this exhaust. There's a link in the description and a link up here. Uh, in that video, I took a closer look at the different components that come with the system, and then I compared the weight of this versus the factory exhaust. In this video, we'll cover the removal of the factory exhaust, installation of the Leo Vinci slip-on, and then we'll go into some sound and video samples of uh, the factory exhaust compared to this exhaust, and we'll test this one with and without the DB killer. All right, we're going to get started by taking off the stock exhaust. And I'm just going to show this process on the right side um, because once you take this uh, shield off, the process is exactly the same for both the right and the left side. It's very easy to do. Uh, one little tip that I have is make sure you have a place ready as you're taking off the stock parts uh, where you can set them down where they're not going to get all scratched up. I'm just using a towel that I laid out on the floor. All right, so first we're going to take off this shield. Uh, all you need is a four millimeter Allen wrench. And then there are two prongs in rubber grommets, and you just pull this out, and then down. To get off the stock muffler, we first have to loosen the exhaust clamp down here. And to do that, all you need is a 10 millimeter socket wrench. And then we're going to remove this bolt that's hanging the muffler right here, and you need a 6 millimeter. Allen wrench for this side, and then a 12 millimeter, or I'm sorry, a 14 millimeter uh, box wrench for the back. And it should just slide right out. When you're removing the stock exhaust, Make sure to keep track of this uh, spacer that sits right here. It might come off with the exhaust or it might stay in there, uh, but we're going to reuse that when we install the other exhaust. Okay, now what we're going to do is put in the aftermarket mid pipe. And before we do that, uh, we're using, there's two of these, one for the right, one for the left. And the one for the right side has this bracket, and this is for that shield that we took off already. And before we put this on, there's this little uh, threaded insert that's just going to slide onto here. And this is for the, that Allen bolt to thread into. So we just slide that in place like that. All right, we're just going to set that there for now. All right, now that we've got the mid-pipe installed, we're going to hang the exhaust hanger bracket. There are two of these pieces, and they're both identical. And uh, the top hole goes behind this mounting location. We're also going to use this bolt provided in the Leo Vinci kit with this aluminum washer. And I'm reusing this stock uh, metal cover that just goes over this area. And then this 13 millimeter nut threads on the back. And at this point, we're just going to keep this uh, loose enough that we can adjust things as we go. Next, we're going to put the carbon hanger around the muffler. And if you look at the rubber, uh, the rubber pad that goes all the way around, one of the sides is a little bit wider than the other, and that's to account for the taper in the exhaust. So when you look at the rubber, uh, on this one this is the wider side, and this is going to go towards the front of the exhaust because that's where it's thinner. So you just slide that on. The distance between the front of this carbon bracket and the front of this stainless steel band 
is supposed to be 48 millimeters. All right, next you're going to grab the aluminum piece that looks like this. There are two of them that come with the kit, one which has a single deep groove on one side and the other which has two shallow grooves on both sides. I believe this is for the stainless steel exhaust and this is the one for the carbon exhaust. So this just slides in between these two vertical parts of the bracket. And then you're going to take the shorter bolt provided with the kit and the aluminum washer that fits on that. Slide the exhaust as far as it'll go. And then line up the hole uh, on the exhaust hanger and this bracket right here. And thread the nut on from the back. I should mention at this point, uh, Leo Vinci provides these baffles and these fit into the muffler from this side and you would slide these in and then slide it onto the link pipe. Uh, the purpose of these is to meet European homologation uh, requirements. Uh, since those aren't applicable here, I'm not going to be using these. All right, now this is the hardest part of the installation and it's installing these spring tensioners between these two hooks. Some companies provide a tool to help pull on these. Uh, Leo Vinci doesn't include that in their kit. So what I found was this hook uh, that I can use to pull with, and then it's got this kind of big flat area uh, to give me something to pull against. Now at this point, all the bolts should be loose enough that there's a little bit of play. So when you're applying pressure to pull back the spring, make sure that you're propping yourself up against the exhaust so that you don't rip it out. Also be careful if uh, something sli uh, slips out that you don't scratch the mufflers. Oh, I just broke my my tool. Try this again. This time I'm using an Allen wrench. All right, that worked pretty well. Now that we've got everything installed but still loose, what I would recommend doing is repeating the installation on the other side. And then with everything still loose, you can make adjustments. You can rotate the link pipe, rotate the muffler, rotate this bracket, and make sure that both mufflers look symmetrical. Um, make sure that they're lined up so that they're vertical and that the spacing between the swing arms is the same. And it's just really a matter of trial and error. And then once you get everything dialed in, um, Kind of tighten the bolts slightly, make you know, make sure your adjustments are still holding, and then once everything is dialed in, tighten everything down. All right, the torque specs for this bolt is uh, 35 newton meters or 26 foot pounds, and then this is really important: the torque spec for the uh, pipe clamp down here, or the tube clamp rather, is 21 newton meters or 15 foot pounds, and it's important to get this to the right tightness so that you don't get any exhaust leak and so that you don't accidentally over tighten it and then crush one of the tubes. All right, now that we've got everything all lined up and uh, have all the bolts tightened down, you're gonna wanna put this shield back on. There's just the two prongs that slide into the rubber grommets and then this bolt should line up with the hole over here. And then before we start the bike, we're just gonna wipe it down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Make sure you get all the metal. And I'm also gonna wipe down the carbon. Um, and the point of that is just so that is as uh, the metal heats up, the oil from your fingers doesn't discolor it. So we're just going to get it all cleaned up and then take it out and get the bike started.
All right, here's a quick look at the setup that I'm using to capture the audio and record the volume of the uh, different exhausts. Starting at the top, I have my main camera. This is an Olympus EM1. And connected to it, I have the Zoom F1 field recorder. I'm using a mid-side capsule. And this will be recording audio internally. Um, this records higher quality audio than the camera, uh, but it'll also be feeding audio into the camera. And the reason I'm using this, uh, in addition to the better quality microphone, is that I can actually uh, fix the audio gain so that when you hear the difference in volume between the different exhausts, it's actually how it would sound. Uh, this isn't going to be compensating and auto-leveling the different uh, volumes. And then down here, uh, I have a decibel meter. This will be recording the max volume when I do engine revs or drive-by. Um, but in case I lose the reading on this, I'll have the uh, Sony X3000 uh, recording that so I can review that later. So that's it, and uh, hopefully this setup works out well.
All right, guys, so now I just want to share my overall thoughts and feelings on this Leo Vinci slip-on kit. Uh, I'm really happy with the overall quality of all the, the pieces and the way that everything came together. Um, you can tell that quality materials and good design are used throughout, and uh, the installation was really easy. The only two challenges in the installation were uh, pulling those tensioner springs and then making sure that everything is lined up. And neither of those are uh, really all that difficult, but I would say those are just the two biggest hurdles in the installation process. But overall, it's, it's simple to do and it's something you can do with pretty basic tools. Um, in terms of sound, actually before I talk about sound, so the main reason that I was looking for a slip-on kit, as I mentioned before, uh, was to address interference issues with the stock exhaust and my feet. Um, and they also come close to the passenger feet and they can interfere with your swing arm spools. So this kit has addressed all of those problems. It creates plenty of space for my heels. Even if I push my heels down, uh, I can't touch the pipe. Uh, it opens up more space for the passenger feet and it's given me plenty of room for the swing arm spools that I want to use. So it's checked all those boxes and that's really what I was after. Uh, I was really happy with the sound of the stock exhaust. I like an, an exhaust that's pretty quiet, but I like the bassy sound. And so um, I would say the this Leo Vinci kit with the DB Killers in sounds pretty close to stock. Uh, it's It still has a nice smooth sound, but it's got a little bit more bass to it without having any drone on the highway. Uh, it's a really good sound and I'm really happy with it. Uh, and then when you take the DB killers out, it's, you know, as you'd expect, it's a bit louder, uh, a bit bassier, and it's got some more edge to it. Like you, it sounds like, you know, when you're at a lower RPM, you can hear the engine pulses. Uh, you get more popping and burbling on deceleration, which I think is, is pretty cool. And overall, it's a sound that I really enjoyed and it was fun riding it with the DB killers out. Uh, it wasn't obnoxious by any means. Um, but for me, for spending, you know, hours on the bike at a time for long trips or, uh, you know, pulling into my neighborhood late at night or pulling into a campground on a trip, I don't want to disturb other people. So I prefer the sound uh, with the DB Killers in. But I think a lot of you guys are going to like it with the DB Killers out. And it's important to keep in mind that with the stock exhaust, or rather the, you know, the stock components of the exhaust, the headers and the catalytic converter. Um, an aftermarket slip-on isn't going to be able to make the bike extremely loud and the only way to do that is if you get aftermarket headers and eliminate the catalytic converter. Um, for me that's that sound is obnoxious and I wouldn't be able to ride with that kind of setup for very long. Uh, but I think this Leo Vinci kit is great and I think with or without the DB killers um, you know, if you're looking for a quieter ride, but still like a nice uh, aggressive sound, keep the DB Killers in. And if you're looking for something a little bit more aggressive than that and a little bit louder, then you take the DB Killers out. Uh, one last note, the DB Killers are really easy to take out. Um, they, they're held in with a four millimeter screw and that screw just has a little spot weld on it. I didn't even notice it until I was taking the second one out. So when you're using an Allen wrench you'll break the spot weld very easily um, but it's just it holds the screw in place. Once you take that screw out uh, you just grab the DB killer insert with some pliers and pull it out. Um, unlike some exhausts you don't have to take the the actual muffler off. Um, the DB killers can go in and out while the exhaust is still installed on the bike. So really easy process and overall it's a great kit. You should check it out. Thanks for watching.